Good to know one. All right, Jerry, you can kick it off. All right. All right, everybody, welcome to an evening with head coach Steve Peichel. I will be your guest host, if you will, for tonight. I'm Jerry Recco, the uh, radio play-by-play man, and we are coming off a terrific year, another terrific year of men's basketball at Rutgers. Um, first time the Knights make back-to-back years NCAA tournaments in 75-76. Just think about that for a second. And, of course, we are joined by the head coach of the Scarlet Knights for this nice evening, head coach Steve Peichel. Sir, how are you? How is your summer going? <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's been a great summer. We just finished up uh, our last recruiting period here. Um, all of June and July, pretty much on the road recruiting. So we had our team practice today at one o'clock. We have camp going on. We have a couple of visitors coming the end of the week. So just a regular week of uh, a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> And I will tell you, I have a 12 year old who's quite disappointed that he could not attend one of your camps because of baseball. It was on our calendar. So hopefully next year before we get to the team. And I know I feel like I do this with you every year, but I think it's important because I think most people believe when the season ends that you get like a break and that you can take four months off and then you get ready maybe in August to get going again. Explain a little bit just when the season ends, maybe a couple of days, but kind of how you ramp right back up and kind of what the job entails through the, the summer months. Yeah, I mean, it's really changed over the years, too. And, uh, you know, with, with college basketball and college athletics changing by the minute, you know, the transfer portal, uh, players having a lot, uh, a lot more opportunities. Um, you know, the travel just starts, the recruiting starts. You know, we, we now don't put na- grades by our players. So we have our roster for this year. It doesn't, sophomores don't necessarily become juniors anymore. Juniors don't become seniors. So it's just very different. Um, June has become a high school recruiting month because all the high school co- coaches wanted to be more involved. So now they opened up the whole month of June, which used to be a quiet period where you could have kids visit, but you couldn't go on the road to watch players play. So June has become a whole month for high school coaches. And then July, the whole month is, is all AAU events. Um, so yeah, it's just become, you know, year round, um, whether it be scheduling, whether it be looking at ways to prove your program, um, you know, dealing with transfers, dealing with all the different things you have to deal with. And NIL has become a huge, you know, topic and collectives and all these different things that uh, players have opportunities now to take advantage of. So there's been a lot of conversations about that. And a lot of these things are still evolving too, Jerry. So it's it's very busy as soon as the season ends. It's it, um, busy. And as you say, 12 years ago, it was quiet at the end. And now it's very, very busy. Well, and it makes me think like when I started this with you, you started this six years ago, seven years ago, I guess now, just how much the game has changed. And also, the perception of Rutgers basketball last year, a third straight winning season. First time the program's done it in 30 years, which is unbelievable. Four straight wins over ranked opponents. And that stretch was as exciting as I mean anything I've been through. Michigan State, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Illinois. It was awesome. The Purdue went earlier. I mean, there's just so much stuff from this season um, to look back on and be so proud of. And it's just amazing the changes that have occurred in those years. Speaking of change. Let's talk about some of the new faces that uh, the fans and the students get used to. Cam Spencer, Antoine Wolfork, and Derek Simpson. Take them in any order you'd like. I tell you, first of all, I'm I'm very uh, thankful and excited that we have everybody back. We didn't have one guy put his name in the portal. So I'm very thankful to the returning guys. They all had options. They were, um, you know, to go other places. They decided to stay and then. You know, couldn't be more excited about the three additions. You know, Cam, they're all here right now. So they've been practicing and working out with us. Um, Cam Spencer is as good a shooter as we've had in the program, but great kid, competitive. He led the Patriot League in scoring 19.2 points per game. And for his career, he was, you know, 40%, you know, three point shooter, um, one of the best three point shooters in, in the country. So excited. He's 6'4, 6'4 and a half. He's 218 pounds. So he's, built he's tough he's going to help us a great deal and he's been great with our locker room and been great with our guys so a very important part that you know you don't read in the paper often about players is the kind of teammates they are and i think we got a great one in, in cam he's going to be a great teammate and he's a great addition to our program um derek uh is from right down the road 
Simpson. I think people are going to be tremendously excited. He's the most athletic guard that we've had, and, and I'll put him right up there with Corey Sanders and any of those other players that everyone thinks was, was athletic. He's as athletic as any. He's fast. Um, you know, he's really blended in nicely. The guys love him. He knows how to play. Um, yeah, great addition. Another local guy that had a lot of choices, decided to stay home and you know, we're excited about that. Comes from a great family. And Antoine is a guy that six months of football and six months of basketball for the last five years wow. um, uh, had an opportunity to go play Ohio State football and, and decided he wanted to play basketball. And when, when you watch him play, um, you'll see a lot of that physical. He's built. He's athletic. Um, what I've been most surprised with, too, in practice, he picks up everything quickly. He is as laterally quick and strong physically as, as we've had. Um, he's going to be a really good player and a great, another great kid from a great family, a, a worker. Um, these three guys are what we're all about, you know, humble, appreciative, thankful young men and that are going to work and that are going to be great teammates and help Rutgers basketball continue to be good. And it's interesting. The one thing, I mean, there's a lot to like about them all, but interesting what you say for each one of them. Spencer, the kid out of Loyola, Maryland, 40% from three with the way the game is now huge. You talk about Wolf Fork with the physicality, playing in the Big Ten, which we know is a grind every night. And then Simpson, the fact that you kept them home, just how important collectively to get that mix with this class. Yeah, I mean, they really fit some pieces that, you know, hey, we, we were missing. Um, but they're great teammates, like the guys love them. And, and I knew they would be that, you know, if you saw them play in high school, they played the right way and they played for winning programs. Um, Cam Spencer, um, you know, played lacrosse. His brother was actually the best player in, in the country in lacrosse before he transferred to Northwestern, had an unbelievable year. He's playing in the G League now. Pat Spencer, real competitive family, uh, families that want to win. Winning's important to them, and that's how they kind of, uh, practice and that's they're in the gym kind of guys. Um, and they've just jumped right in. The guys really like them a ton. So, um, I always think that's really as important as anything when you have a great locker room. Um, and we'll certainly have a great locker room this year. And those three guys will jump right into this program and, and they'll help us all, all three of them will help us immediately. All right. So, new faces, which is awesome, but continuity and you've got good continuity with some of your key pieces. We know Ron and we wish him the best, of course, with the Raptors. We'll get to him in a moment. Of course, Gio in his five years. But you've got one of the best defensive players in all of college basketball returning in Caleb McConnell. You've got Cliff Amore with, I mean, the presence he's got underneath the basket, outstanding. And Paul Mulcahy running the show. How important is it to have those three guys back and kind of leading this group? I mean, uh, it's, you know, when people talk about the season and I said, if you told me, you know, before the season, I would have the leading assist guy in the Big Ten. I would have the best defender in the Big Ten, but I, more importantly, I think he's the best defender in the country. And then the leading dunker in the country. And I think the best big guy in the Big Ten and Cliff. Um, to have those three, that's a pretty good uh, foundation uh, for a good year. And they've gotten better, too. That's the good part, you know. Uh, Caleb worked out for four or five NBA teams and had some great workouts, really was, you know, close to, you know, signing and playing professional basketball um, to get him back was just, you know, great. And he's one of those guys that's always been a team guy and keeps getting better every year. He's going to have an awesome year this year. Paul continues to get better every year. You've seen him. Um, Cliff, um, if you saw him, the way he practiced today, he just looks like, you know, a guy that's ready to have an unbelievable season. But I will also tell you, Mawat Mag started games for us last year when, you know, he he's probably been our most improved player along with Jalen Miller, you know, in, in this preseason here. And, um, you know, excited about Dean. And I think you saw some of the improvements that he made. Oscar Palmquist will be a good player for us and, and will play minutes. I think what, you know, people sometimes don't understand is, you know, I didn't want to take Ron out of the game. You know, like, you know, I didn't want to take Paul out of the game. There was, you know, you got the best defender in the league. There's not many minutes. And those guys were pretty durable, too. They didn't miss many games. I mean, Ron dislocated his finger. He played the next game. Um, 
you know, so there weren't a lot of minutes available. Uh, but whenever there were the beginning of the season and Watt played, he played really well. Whenever Oscar got in, played well. Dean Reber really found a role for himself. These guys are good players. So, you know, excited. And Andre Hyatt is another guy. You know, he was our sixth man last year. He's got the potential to be, um, you know, a really, really good player. And, and now with the added opportunity to play minutes because those two guys have, have moved on um, really helps him a great deal, too. So, you know, couldn't be more excited about, you know, our veteran guys, the returning group and thankful that they all came back because they all had opportunities. I think just about every school in Division One lost players for whatever reason, and mostly because they don't play enough. Um, all these guys stayed and continue to be great representatives of our great university. And what does that say? Because it's, you know, as you're going through all these players, and in my head, I'm thinking, my God, it's it's a blessing to have them. And yet, I've always told you, it's got to be so incredibly hard to find minutes for players, yet you need them. Um, they don't enter the transfer portal. They stay. What does that say about what you've built here? And and more more importantly, I think for the the student athletes, what they've experienced, and that's been the winning and and being part of a good culture. Yeah, I mean, like I value every guy, you know, that's on scholarship. Every decision that we make with our roster, you, you know, we make sure you know that they're going to fit Rutgers and going to fit our program, but fit our locker room too. Or, you know, you don't know the amount of phone calls I got from players this year in the transfer portal that couldn't stand, you know, their teammates and they couldn't wait to leave and they didn't like something. They didn't like the coaches, you, you know, like these guys um, continue to stay here. Um, we're building, you know, a great program and I'm just thankful, you know, that they decided to continue, um, you know, along with that task because there's times during the year where people are okay. Hey, transfer leave you you have no idea how many phone calls are made during the season like you know i tell these guys all the time stay the course good things are going to happen for you uh believe in the system believe in the process believe in the university and these guys have done that you know and uh it's not easy i mean some schools lost 10 kids in the portal and that's why it's very hard to predict the future of a lot of teams everyone has teams going to be good there's some teams in our league that are going to have five new starters from the portal I don't know, they could be first or they could be last. I, I don't know, um, you know, but I know what our program is built on. I'm thankful that all these guys have returned and I'm, you know, happy that the, the kids decided to jump on board Cam Spencer, Derek Simpson and Antoine um, to help continue make us better. It's an evening with Steve Peichel. First week of November, it's coming quicker than you can believe as uh, Rutgers will open up with Columbia at Jersey Mike's Arena. Let's talk about the arena and the way you guys have played there, because I went back and looked, and this even includes the pandemic year with no fans. And we certainly know what that place is like with fans in the building. And I'm sure you know this, but if you don't, 42 and eight at home at Jersey Mike's Arena. And the one year you lost four of the eight with no fans in the building, which means 14 and three and 18 and one. Those are two of the last three seasons. The progress that you guys have made, making this building so difficult for teams to come in and play. How proud are you that the student, the students, the fans have really kind of adopted this place and attacked it and attacked opposing teams and made it such a difficult place for other schools to come in and play? First of all, I'm so thankful to our season ticket holders. Like you guys have been uh, awesome. And uh, you've been there for, you know, every one of those wins um, and a few of those losses, too. We need you for both. And uh, it's become the toughest place, you know, in the country to play. And uh, I could tell you that, Jerry, because scheduling now, when I call, a, you know, a school and ask them if they want to do a home in, in a way, mm. it, you can't hang up quick enough. All right. And before they were calling me, the phone was ringing off the hook. And they will play us in like, you know, South Dakota somewhere, but they do not want to play us at the rack. And obviously one of our strengths is, is Jersey Mike's arena. Like, and I want to play games in Jersey Mike's, you know? So, um, you know, that's getting a little bit more difficult, but students come out, they're excited. I was outside today uh, as we we're running camp and two students came up and they said, they can't wait for the season to start. And, you know, it's a real credit to our marketing people and to all the people 
um, that work so hard at Rutgers, but our students make it fun. The riot squad is unbelievable. Um, the band, I, like I said, the cheerleaders, um, the dance team, all it's so important to have all those elements and our season ticket holders. And we got to continue that too. That's one of our strengths. And, and as you know, Jerry, when you go around this league, a lot of teams have had that, you know, built in advantage for a long time. It's nice that, you know, we're really uh, building that here. And in the last four years, it's really been incredible. Uh, the environment and how hard it is to play. And, uh, you know, someone told me the other day now with Cameron and uh, we're like picked in the top four environments in the country. And, you know, as you know, that wasn't the case six years ago. And, um, you know, so real proud that that has uh, what transformed here, you know, on the banks. Well, and you're right. And the national recognition is is deserved. It's well deserved because I'll tell you this. Every home game feels like not just a basketball game. It feels like an event. And when you get into the Big Ten schedule, I mean, it's hard getting tickets. And it's just, it's awesome. It really is. I, I look forward to these games, and I can't wait for the season to start. And even with Steve Peichel, let me ask you this, because this has been something that's, you know, it's come up for sure. The non-conference schedule, I don't know how you do this, because you've got the 10 built-in Big Ten road games, which is hard enough. And I'm looking at Temple at Mohegan Sun this year. I'm looking at... Miami and the Big Ten ACC Challenge, the Seton Hall game, of course, which will be at Jersey Mike's Arena, and then you've got Wake Forest this year as well. Just talk about the difficulty of what you have in front of you in terms of the non-conference schedule that you have put together. Well, I, I mean, I, it's so hard to build a schedule at any point in time, and a lot of these games we don't know or find out until late in the season, so it's really hard to construct your schedule with the you know, Big East that we thought we were going to play in the Big East challenge this year and then we were eliminated you know for some reason and then by the time you find out too who your opponent is in the acc challenge and you've got to block off dates and then you've got other dates for finals and everything else so scheduling's hard um it's not just picking up the phone and making a phone call and the other team you, you know it's got the date available they don't have final exams they got enough days in between their next games you know, it's it's really, you know, tough to schedule, you know, games. And then when you factor in, there's five metrics that we really use um, that we we kind of build our schedule around. And um, the KPI, the SOR, you know, all the different things, Ken Palm, the Sagarin, you know, BPI is another analytics tool that we use. So there's predictive measures and then there's uh, metrics, too, that you deal with. And Everyone will talk about the net. That's like the sixth thing. It's really not even, you know, that that's the new shiny toy, the net. You know, everyone looks at net rankings. That's like number six on the board, mm -hmm. you, you know. So there's a lot of different things you look in. You're trying to predict how teams are. and um, Like Temple, we're going to play them this year. They think it's their best team that they've had in, in, a, in a long time. They have all their starters back. And, you, you know, so we're, we're excited about going to the Mohegan Sun. We could not get them to come here. But the Mohegan Sun's a great venue. I think our fans can come out and, and, and see that game. I love the trip to Miami. Obviously, Miami went as far as any ACC team, um, you know, in the tournament. They advanced. Um, and they have, you know, a great backcourt. And, and he's a heck of a coach. Um, anytime you play Wake Forest is one of the most improved programs in the ACC. Um, Seton Hall and get that rivalry. Is, is, is unbelievable. And then those other games, like Ryder's going to be very good this year. You know, we think they're going to be one of the best teams in that league. And, you know, we have to build our schedule to get better. We want home games. We don't want to go on the road. We don't want to play in too many neutral sites. You know, I'm going to get home games. So scheduling's a tough thing to do, but I really like our schedule. And, and we continue, Jerry, to, to play one of the top 30 schedules in the country every year. So our strength of schedule is, is one of the best. And, and uh, We'll continue to have it, you know, that way. And the league, you know, makes it that way, too. And now we're at UCLA and USC. So, you know, a great league will even get greater. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that in just a moment, um, and I will. But just uh, you mentioned Ryder and some of these other non-conference schools. You know, when you started this, you could say because you were in the Big Ten, you had an X on your back. But because of the success, I mean, these teams are really coming in gunning for you because of what it does for their net ranking. So how difficult has it been as you've gotten better and better when you are playing Big Ten schools that are really difficult to make sure the guys on a night-in, night-out basis don't take these teams for granted? Because I've got to think 
It would be really easy to do when you're looking at Iowa and Purdue and Michigan State to see these lower level teams, but still really good coming after you with everything they got. You know, every game you play is challenging. You, you know, every game is it, it helps prepare you for the next game. Um, you know, I was at Stony Brook for 11 years, so I couldn't wait to play, you know, Rutgers or UConn or one of those teams. And my teams always played really well. Like those are big games for those teams. You, you know, you have to have your team ready. Those teams challenge you in different ways. You know, uh, Iowa is going to zone you the whole time. So if you play a team like Ryder, they're going to play some zone and they're going to mix it up and it gets you prepared for those games down the road, too. Um, but, you know, there's some really good coaches at all these levels. We've certainly been very challenged in, in the non-conference. Um, and we're going to continue to, you, you know, be. We do now have a little mark, especially at home. Like people don't come in here. They come in here knowing that they're going to have to play good basketball. But, you know, it's like, it's like everything, Jerry. I say you learn you learn a lot from your team in the non-conference, you know, and, and you learn a lot. As much as people don't want to hear this, you learn, you know, a lot about your teams when you lose, too you know, and, and how they can get off the mat and, and all the different things. But, you, you know, these non-conference games are challenging. It doesn't matter who you're playing or where you're playing. You know, you got COVID you've been dealing with. You got injuries. You got a lot of things. You know, we lost a few games in our non-conference. We didn't have Geo Baker early in the year. Um, there were one possession games. Well, Geo Baker's pretty good. And he won us some a lot of one possession games, you, you, you know, and, and, you know, but, our team had to learn how to win games without them, you know, that kind of thing. So you learn a lot of lessons and uh, you hope your team just stays together and keeps building. That's what we've been really able to do the last few years. You just keep building, uh, stay the course, and everyone wants to win every game. I'd love to go undefeated. There's only one team, my daughter's lacrosse team this year at North Carolina. They went undefeated and they won the national championship. But um Men's basketball, I don't think there's been one of those teams, not for a while. I think Indiana back in the day there. But, um, you know, you learn a lot from your team. And the non-conference kind of teaches you a lot of lessons. It allows you to play some different guys. It allows you to, you know, learn who your team is and learn who you can count on. And the games come at you quick. That is for darn sure. It's an evening with Steve Peichel as we're getting set for the 2022-23 season, which sounds a little futuristic, but that is where we're at right now. You mentioned Geo Baker. So let's talk about a couple of, and this will sound weird, a couple of former Scarlet Knights. Let's start with Geo receiving the Big Ten Medal of Honor uh, for demonstrating excellence on and off the field or the court. Um, and some of these numbers, and I know he had the 50, and I don't care because these numbers are really, like one of these numbers is impressive. But listen to this for everybody out there. He finished his career second in assists all time at Rutgers, fourth in steals all time at Rutgers, fifth in threes made at Rutgers, eighth in points scored. He was all Big Ten three seasons. Just how proud you are of what that young man accomplished at his time with the Scarlet Knights. And, and as we mentioned an even better kid off the court. I mean, and he got his master's degree too, just in the in the middle of all that stuff too. But um, you know, and he came to Rutgers too when we weren't we weren't selling a brand new practice facility. We weren't sell, selling home sellouts. Um, we weren't selling winning seasons, any of that. He believed in us before before anyone, and um, you know, couldn't be more proud. And if you really look at his st statistics too, he played a fifth year for us, but he he had enough injuries during his career where he missed games every year. So he probably played the same amount of games as most four year, four year guys. So the records that he had, but I'm most proud of really led us to three NCAA tournaments. And, and you know, I know the COVID year was the COVID year. That was a 20 win team. That team was in the NCAA tournament. So uh, playing as well as any team in the country at that time too. So um, Geo helped lead a team that hadn't been to the NCAA tournament in a long time, long, long time to three NCAA tournaments. So um, couldn't be more proud of him. And now he's doing great things. He, he took the name, image, and likeness, and he's doing seminars, and he's helping other kids uh, try to take advantage of, of, of this rule. And, um, you know, he's just been a great example of coming to a university and a university believing in him and he believing in this university and, and uh, working hard. Um, and he's a great example of what we want, you know, Scarlet Knights in the future to be like. And then, of course, there's Ron Harper Jr. So we know he's with the Toronto Raptors now. What can you tell us about where Ron is and, and his progress? I tell you, well, he's working camp this week, too. So that's the kind of kid he is. You know, he's in the NBA now. 
and he's back here and he's uh, working, working hard in the gym and, and, and doing some unbelievable things. But he just got done with summer league. The Toronto Raptors like him a lot. Um, obviously, when you sign a guy to a two-way guaranteed deal, um, he's going to have a lot of opportunities to play in the NBA. He's an NBA player. He got his degree. He comes from an unbelievable family. Um, so I look, he'll be an 11-year NBA veteran and, and uh, um, excited and proud. He's another guy that came here before, you know, it was the new practice facility, before all those kind of things that we had to sell. Not a lot of tradition in the last most recent history and uh, change that perception. And, you know, for a New Jersey kid to stay at home and have the kind of career that he, he's legendary, you know, and to be an All-American and to uh, go from being a, a little recruited player out of high school to one of the, you know, great players in the Big Ten is an unbelievable achievement. How much does it, and we'll get to a couple of fan questions in a little, we got a bunch of them in just a minute or so. Two more things for you though, because you talk about Ron staying home, Paul stayed home. Um, how, when you recruited Derek Simpson, how much does that help that kids from Jersey see that kids from Jersey stayed and not only stayed, but succeeded and, and in Paul's case continues to succeed as he goes into his, this next season? Well, I mean, I'm real proud. I mean, if you look at the kids that have come from local places, I mean, you can't, I'll put their careers up against any New Jersey kid that plays anywhere. You know, the career that Cliff's having, the career that Paul's having, the career that Ron has had, and Derek Simpson's going to follow right in that suit. He's very good, and he's going to help us a great deal. Um, you know, I'm real proud of that. And, and they're all graduating. You know, Paul graduated a year early, so he's starting his master's a year early. So um, talk about a driven, you know, young man that's getting better in basketball, already has his degree, and now going to start his master's in his fourth year. So, um, you know, couldn't be more proud. Cliff continues. He's a Dean's List student. He's not just the best big guy in the Big Ten. He's now a Dean's List student and continues to work and, and, and do great things. So I'm real proud of, you know, the guys that decided to stay home. I'm also proud of the guys that came from out of state. You know, those guys um, came to Rutgers. They want to be here. I think that's a big part. I think we've done a really good job. Brandon Knight, Carl Hobbs, TJ Thompson, you know, my staff evaluating guys that want to be at Rutgers. And I think that's why, you know, they're not in the portal. And that's why um, they're having the great careers that they are. And, you know, for local players, they can look up who's had the best careers, you know, who, the guys that have stayed home. And I'll put them up against anybody statistically um, in the country. And shame on me, because I did not mention the coaching staff. You just alluded to them. The, I, I mentioned the word continuity a couple of times. The fact that you've had really good continuity with your coaches and, and going into this season, you know, it was close. I guess Brandon could have left, had a chance to leave. The fact that he's back, though, and, you're, and your staff's intact, what does that do for you in this team? Well, I mean, you know, Pat Hobbs has been great. That's a big part of this. You, you know, got to retain great, you know, assistants. Now, I want them all to be head coaches. So when they get that opportunity, I think that, you know, that's awesome. Um, Carl Hobbs is, you know, obviously been a coach. He's been a head coach. He's been the Atlantic 10 coach of the year. Um, he had opportunities this year. TJ Thompson, I think he's one of the best young coaches in, in, in college basketball. So he's going to have opportunities to leave. Uh, Brandon Knight, you know, our associate head coach and, and the job he does and continues to do is, is top shelf. But um, I like that they want to stay here, too. If they don't find a job that, you know, fits them, um, then they want to stay and they know they got a good home here. And I think continuity is very, very important. Um, I know we're not going to keep them all forever. Um, and I look forward to, you know, them getting their own jobs and, and, and moving on to do some great things. Um, they all are great people from great families. And, you know, and I also got him. Steve Hain is Mike Larkin. You know, these guys, Tom Barrett, these guys are as good as, as there are. And, and, and that's what has made us really, really good. And we're going to be good again this year. And, and it's the continuity and the, and the efforts that they bring that really sets us apart. Well, I will tell you, as we get to some fan questions, I had a nice conversation with Brandon in Chicago. Uh, during the Big Ten tournament, and I was kind of prodding him, meaning, you know, man, it's your turn soon, and he knew it, and boy, he just talked about working for you and the culture you guys have built, and, you know, it, there's not a bigger compliment that you could receive that you got guys that want to work for you, so uh, kudos to you for that, and 
hats off to you. So let's get to some phone questions. Um, yes. First, and this is an evening with Steve Pico. We're getting set for the 22-23 season. This first one comes from Chris Thompson, who says and asks Coach Pico, we are super excited to see that you signed an extension to be at Rutgers long term. Can you confirm that you are a Scarlet Knight for life? <laughs> <laughs> I hope they want to keep me for life. <laughs> That's the important thing. I'm, I'm, I love my job and I've loved it here at Rutgers from day one. I, actually, now I have some unbelievable news because my daughter Brooke is um, going to be a Scarlet Knight too. So she's wow. going to go to graduate school here at Rutgers. So I have two. My son's going to be a senior, and That's Brooke awesome. now is going to be in a master's program for uh, business of fashion, which is a great major, a new one. That's uh, she's very excited about. So I have two, I got my little guy on the way, so I may have, you know, three coming up here. So um, I love it here. I'm thankful. Um, you know, we have a great president too. I, you know, I have to mention the changes that he's made here at this university. President Holloway's done an unbelievable job, um, uh, you know, navigating COVID and all the other things. We had our greatest applicant pool ever in Rutgers, university history, like the greatest applicant pool. That meant they took the highest standards and high, you know, it was as competitive a class ever to enroll here at Rutgers. And, you know, I just think it's all the good things that are going on here. Athletics is just a part of it, but you know, all the different programs and all the building that we're doing and um, all the excitement here in, in New Jersey, um, you know, has all come together. And, and again, when you get a brand new president, it brings that kind of energy and, He's such a presence around campus. So uh, we got a great leadership in Pat Hobbs and a great president. And so a lot of good things going on here. And, and now my daughter's going to be a Scarlet Knight too. So I'm going to be here for a while. Thanks. That is awesome. And congr good luck and congratulations with that. It's nice to have them close by after being away for so long. Um, yeah. This one comes from Matt Williams. Hey, Coach, it's been amazing to see this team continue to improve year after year since you took over six years ago was wondering what you think is the ceiling for our program over the next five years? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I've said this from the beginning, you know, and you know my shelves that I have in the back, you know. I, I do. We're, we're trying to win a national championship. And, and uh, you know, when you're in a league like this, you're challenged at the highest level. And when you can compete, we finished fourth place in the best league in the country, you know, to win a national championship. And, um, you know, that continues to be our goal along with Jerry, you know, I'm very proud. Every kid has graduated since I've been here, you know, that's finished his eligibility with the highest grade point average is Randy Larson. She does an unbelievable job um, with our guys, but uh, you know, kids have graduated grad school. I was just with the quasi Yaboa the other day. He's still finishing up his grad school. He just signed a contract in, in Turkey. Um, so our former players are still finishing up some, some school and, and graduate work, but, real proud of, you know, where the program has been in those areas too. We give back to the community. These guys represent the school the right way. And, you know, we're trying to win a national championship and that's what we talk about. And that's, you know, that's our goal. And um, that's what we're going to strive to do here for the next five years. Next question from John Crew. Hey coach, can you give us one thing to focus on when we have the ball and one thing to focus on when we're in defense to help us understand how we're doing in a game? You know, uh, you know, always, um, you know, I think very important, you know, on the offensive end to share the basketball, like when when we're passing the ball and everyone's involved, I think it's a really good sign for a basketball team. It's a really good sign in recruiting, too, when I can show film of, you know, the players like, hey, if you're open in this program, you're going to get the ball, you know, and, and, and uh, after coming back from watching AAU this summer, that's not the case um, when you watch some of these you know, players play. So I think offensively, you know, always share and share in the ball and, you know, we play team defense. So everyone's got to share in the responsibility of where the basketball is and keeping it out of the paint. Um, we've had an added, you know, I've always been a rebound, rebound, rebound guy. I think that's one area last year where we underachieved in. Um, I think we're going to, you know, be a really good rebounding team this year. I think the, the added pieces are going to help us, but Mawat Mag's an elite blockout guy, you know, like things that you don't see because um, you don't get to see him every day. Oscar Palmquist, an elite blockout guy. I think, um, you know, Dean Reber, an athletic, you know, forward, he'll play more minutes, you know, and now we got, you know, some strong uh, with Wolfhawk and um, Q 
Cam Spencer, and these guys are physical and, and big and strong. And Paul has been a great guard rebounder. So is Caleb. So I think our rebounding numbers are going to be great this year. So, you know, I look at those two, you know, two things, one on offense, one on defense. Those things are always critical to how we're going to win. All right, next question from Andy Soul. Does this team have enough consistent scoring to compete on the road consistently in the Big Ten? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, we lost, you know, two guys that could score and score 30 points in a game. Um, but I knew those guys were going, Jer, you know. So, right. I, I, you know, I think guys graduate, and that's a good thing, too, for your program. Sometimes you you want them to stay forever. I don't know if they could stand Coach Beichel forever, though. Some of them need to <laughs> need to go um but i mean we have guys coming in that i think are going to add you know huge dimensions and and i take a lot of pride and and i know our program does and guys get better here like i you know guys get better if you, you came to watch us practice today and you saw jalen miller and what he looks like right now you would be very excited about you know jalen miller and and he's one of our best defenders anyways, but now you really see him shooting the basketball. He got better this summer. I love it. Moat Mag has gotten better. Dean Reber now has become a consistent three-point shooter. These guys just didn't get the kind of minutes um, to show you that. They showed you in spurts. But, you know, when you have those other guys on the floor, you, you oftentimes want to keep them on the floor. And this past year, every game was so close that I didn't have, you know, 16-point lead where I could just throw guys in for – four or five minutes. As you know, Jerry, every game in this league is a one possession, two possession game. And, and that doesn't bode well sometimes for giving guys, you know, some minutes, some of the younger guys, but feel really good about how we built programs. I think last year at this time, everyone was nervous. Miles was in this guy. And I said, listen, Cliff's pretty good. <laughs> right. You know, and I think you saw that and he'll even be better this year. So, um, you know, you're always excited as a coach when a guys move on and do better things for themselves in their lives. And, and B, giving these other guys opportunities to take some of those minutes and do some of the good things that they've been showing us. All right, we got a few more here. I like this one. This one's from a younger fan. Uh, this is from Liam Zellman. Hey, Coach, went to your basketball camp a few weeks ago and really learned a lot. It's a rising sophomore, started playing football last year for the first time and played quarterback on the JV team. He'll be playing varsity this fall. Was also the number one freshman javelin thrower in New Jersey this year. Finally, he played small forward on his varsity basketball team. Hopes to start. He loves football and track, but he really wants to play basketball in college. He knows he needs to work hard. Beyond that, what is the best advice you could give him? Boy, I tell you, he does a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. You're very involved. I don't know what your day looks like, but you're already on your way to be a Division One, you, you know, athlete. But you know what? I, I, I think um, the great part of sports are, are the lessons and the people that you meet. And uh, when you play all those different sports, you got to meet a lot of great people and friends. But in order to play at this level, uh, you know, of Division One, you know, besides working hard, you got to do well in school. You got to be a great uh, ambassador to your family. Um, and those things, those are the things that we look for. And then you do have to have a certain level of talent. And then, uh, you know, that has to be a position that, you know, coaches are looking for, too. So you sound like a really busy young man. So, uh you got to focus on one sport, probably, if that's the sport you want to go to moving forward. Agreed. Gregory Hancheck, now that you have a former player that was drafted to the NBA, how much of a recruiting edge is that in trying to convince players to come here? Well, you know, I think it's a great, you know, uh, tool. You know, you could talk, talk about a player like Ron who came here and, um, you know, just developed and got better and better. And I still believe his best basketball is ahead of him too. And that's why the Raptors were real smart in the conversations. They really knew that too. Um, you know, but whenever you can go to these examples, I mean, Caleb McConnell was the defensive player of the year in the big 10. Like, you know, he got better. If you saw a film freshman year, you would never said he's going to be the defensive player of the year. You know, Paul Mulcahy, he just continues to get better. So, we sell a great deal of there's opportunity. They took advantage of it, but we develop guys. Guys get better. And uh, if you get better, you can hear your name called or you can sign contracts professionally. And you know, we've been really fortunate. A lot of our guys, too, even though they haven't been in the NBA, CJ Gettys is still playing in Europe. You know, we got a ton of guys, um, you know, a quasi Yaboa, who I mentioned earlier, that, you know, continue Corey Sanders. They just continue to play, you know, basketball. 
uh, beyond here. And that's really a good sign for guys getting better and developing and having opportunities to play professionally. All right, we got time for two more. This one comes from Bob Hamilton. Coach Peichel, thank you so much for doing this. I think I speak for a lot of fans when I'm thinking about this team moving forward after Ron Harper Jr. and Geo Baker. Which players on this team can we count on uh, to be our next go-to Scarlet Knights? I tell you what, I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys. I mean, I have faith in, you know, all my players, but, you know, Cliff is going to have an unbelievable year this year. So, like I said, this last year, just, you know, count our blessings. I don't know how much longer Cliff is going to be be here, but um, he he's improving every single day. He can't get a better young man than Cliff. Paul continues to elevate his game. He's shooting the ball better. He's handling the ball better. His body continues to get stronger. Um, Caleb is working as hard as anyone, and Caleb's in the gym, you know, constantly. But, you know, Mawat Mag and, and Jalen Miller have improved a ton. And Oscar Ponquest, another guy um, is going to get an opportunity this year, along with Andre Hyatt. And, and you guys know how I feel about Dean Reber. I think his upside's as good. as He's as good a shooter as there is in the league. Um, I could play him at two positions this year where there wasn't a lot of minutes for him at Ron's spot. Um, now there's there's more minutes to be had. So, um, you know, we're going to be good, and I'm excited, you know, excited about this team and, and uh, excited about the work ethic that they've shown and the togetherness, which you know, Jerry, I think is very important. No doubt, across any level, any league. Uh, two more, Tim Jones. Hey, Coach. I can't help but look at our new freshman recruit, Derek Simpson, who we talked about earlier, uh, and see a resemblance to Geo Baker. They look exactly alike. <laughs> How excited are you about his game, and do you see what we're all thinking? Hmm. <laughs> uh, someone came in the gym the other day and said, that's Geo, and I said, no, that's that's Derek. So he does have um, some similarities. Um, he, he's very athletic, uh, Derek. Um, can really shoot the ball. So they, they have those same kind of similarities. He's he's a lot faster than Gio was, and he jumps a lot higher. Hmm. Uh, but he shoots the ball and has a really calm presence on the floor. Um, he has a chance to be really good. So I, I've been excited about him, you know, for a long time. And uh, I knew Gio was leaving for a long time. And, you know, he, he kind of reminded me, the first time I saw him, it kind of reminded me a lot of, of Gio um as a freshman he's just a little more advanced you know right now than, than geo was geo had that special quality late in games um and that's something that certainly um will be missed um uh, but hopefully someone else will step up and, and and be that kind of guy late in the games but um derek certainly is uh is, is a really good addition you know to to the scarlet knights looking forward to seeing him and the last one comes from wayne morisic how do you see Paul Mulcahy's role changing this year? Yeah, I want him to lead the league and assist again, lead the country and assist. So if Paul continues to get better the way he has shown in, in, in his first three years, um, you know, I can utilize him in so many ways. His post-up game got better last year, his shooting, uh, his decisions on pick and rolls. He's an elite def uh, rebounder anyways, and he's a really good team defender. Um you know, he's bringing, you know, he'll he'll bring that leadership and that toughness that we need. He's he's uh, he's going to have a really good year. And I think he's ready now uh, since Ron and Gio have left to really take the reins uh, along with Caleb and, and Cliff, and this team. All right. Last thing, because I wanted to mention this earlier and I forgot. I just want to read you two lines, which to me is a testament to what this program has done. In the 2021-22 season, the Scarlet Knights set a record number of season tickets sold. Now, keep in mind, the building is 8,000 seats. You've got over 5,000 season tickets sold from last year, and you guys are already pacing to surpass that number for this year coming along, uh, coming up soon. And then the other one is uh, you're coming off the season where you set a record for sellouts, 15 of them, and you had that sellout streak as well. Just, again, it's... Um, it's a testament to what you've built here, and it has been fun watching you. And, Coach, I am looking forward to the new season that is approaching rapidly. We appreciate your time. It's an evening with Steve Peichel. you got Columbia to kick things off the first week of November. Um, enjoy the rest of your summer as much as you can, and we will see you soon. Jerry, I thank you for having me on, and I thank everyone for being on. I look forward to seeing you at Jersey Mike soon. 
We will see you all at Jersey Mike's Arena in November. Adios.